Paleo media is a niche area of media that focuses on prehistoric life in one way or another. Whether it's fictional or educational, whether it's whimsical or grim, whether it's a game or a book or a movie. Paleo media is versatile, and there's actually a lot of it. So much, in fact, there's an iceberg chart dedicated to it that was actually made by one of my moderators on my Discord server, who I best know as Darwinius. But the iceberg image itself is uploaded to Reddit under his name, DudeGuy2004. Huge thanks to Darwinius for letting me make a video out of it. However, one thing to note before I start, the iceberg itself is technically a work in progress, and new things get added every now and again. I'll try to keep up with this as best as I can, as I plan to make this more of a short series anyways. If you guys have some possible entries to suggest, let me know in the comments down below, or check out our Discord server, where you can chat with me and or Darwinius about possible suggestions. My goal today is to get through the first tier. With that said, let's get started. Jurassic Park. I'm not going to spend too much time with this one, because I've already talked about it enough in my Dinosaur Movie Iceberg video, but to give you a short summary, Jurassic Park is the most popular dinosaur franchise out there, focusing on genetically engineered dinosaurs made to be an attraction for a theme park on the fictional island of Isla Nublar. Things go wrong, the dinosaurs break out, kill a bunch of people, and before you know it, five sequels are made along with a couple of shows, a bunch of video games, and merchandise that's literally everywhere. Toy Story Toy Story is currently a four-movie Pixar franchise that started back in 1995. It focuses on a group of toys that come to life when people aren't around, and one of those toys is a green plastic T-Rex named, well, Rex. If he looks familiar to you, it's likely due to the fact that Rex is actually based on the Dino Riders T-Rex toy from the late 1980s that was made by Tyco Toys before the company was purchased by a larger toy company, Mattel. What's funnier about this is that Rex actually references this acquisition in the first Toy Story movie. Oh really? I'm from Play School. And I'm from Mattel. Well, I'm not really from Mattel, I'm actually from a smaller company that was purchased in the leveraged buyout. Along with that, the later installments introduced us to a Triceratops toy named Trixie, who, later on, would get her own Christmas special in December of 2014 called Toy Story That Time Forgot, which focused on her and a group of our main characters going to another kid's house who got a Battlesaurus toy set which includes a bunch of armored, action-based, anthropomorphic dinosaur toys, including raptor warriors, a pterosaur ruler, and whatever Reptilius is supposed to be. However, due to how distracted their kid is, the Battlesaurus toys have never been played with, and are unaware that they're even toys. So the encounter between them and our main characters turns hostile. Not gonna lie, it's not a bad special. It was actually a fun watch. Doctor Who Doctor Who is a British sci-fi TV show that's focused on a time-traveling scientist whose base of operations is a time machine slash flying saucer disguised as a police booth, which is known as TARDIS, which stands for Time and Relative Dimension in Space. The show started back in 1963 and has gone through several iterations over the last several decades. In that time, the Doctor had gone through multiple dinosaur-related adventures that were actually entire TV specials, like Invasion of the Dinosaurs, which featured in 1974 in the 11th season of the original series. After someone messes around with time, dinosaurs begin to run rampant in the streets of London, which were made with physical models and given movement via different puppeteering methods, though the dinosaurs didn't really turn out all that great. In the seventh season of the 2005 revival series, there was a special called Dinosaurs on a Spaceship that featured in 2012. After the Doctor and his friends inspect an empty Silurian spaceship, he finds out it has robots, a bad guy named Solomon, and of course, dinosaurs on it. If that wasn't weird enough, the episode also features an Egyptian queen, a big game hunter, and the Doctor riding a Triceratops. Going back to the original series, there was another episode called Doctor Who and the Silurians that featured dinosaurs, and in 2014, the series features a T-Rex in a season 8 episode called Deep Breath, 
There's likely more examples of dinosaurs making appearances in the show, but there was also supplementary content from Doctor Who that featured dinosaurs as well, including comics and novelizations like The Ditus Expedition and Doctor Who and the Cave Monsters. I could probably go on with more examples, but considering how much needs to be covered, I'll just leave it here. Ark Survival Evolved Ark Survival Evolved is an open-world video game developed by Studio Wildcard that was initially released in 2015. The game is revolved around you, the player, waking up on a deserted island containing all sorts of prehistoric wildlife that you can hunt, kill, or tame. You basically build your way up from nothing by gathering resources to craft items like tools, weapons, armor, and many other things that you need for your survival. Of course, the more you explore the island, the more you find out about the game's lore, which is just too much to get into for a video like this. So, uh, I'm not going to. Arg was fun back in the day when I got it on PS4, but I have no interest in revisiting it anytime soon. That being said, the game itself was very successful, spawning several DLCs and additional content, along with an upcoming sequel and even an animated TV show. The Croods the Croods is a 2013 animated family movie by DreamWorks that's focused on a caveman family living in a fictional time period, the Crudacious period, that I assume is supposed to be an alternative point in time of the Cenozoic era. However, considering this is a fictional family movie, the animals featured within it are not only exaggerated, but most of them seem to be entirely fantastical while still holding a somewhat primitive look to them. When the family's home and survival are threatened, they're forced to venture into an unknown area of the world where they encounter much more vibrant and exotic-looking prehistoric animals. Night at the Museum Night at the Museum is a 2006 comedy movie about a newly hired security guard that works the night shift at the Museum of Natural History. He soon discovers that all of the people and animals of the exhibits and dioramas are able to come to life due to the magic of an Egyptian artifact. One of these animals that come to life is the Tyrannosaurus Rex skeleton, which was, not surprisingly, my favorite part of the movie when I first watched it all those years ago. In the movie, the skeleton is referred to as Rexy and is treated like a dog, as she wags her tail a lot, plays fetch and whines, and pants and whimpers like a dog at times. The movie would be followed by three more sequels, with one of them being animated and released exclusively on Disney+. In one of the sequels, I believe the third one, there was also the inclusion of a Triceratops skeleton as well. And of course, along with the dinosaur skeletons, the movies also feature a couple of Cenozoic wildlife, including a mammoth and some cavemen. While I don't remember the mammoth playing a huge role in the movies, the cavemen definitely had their moments as comedic relief. Roblox Dinosaur Minigames Never did I think I'd ever talk about Roblox on my channel, but here we are. For those of you that don't know, Roblox is an online game that allows players to create their own worlds and games within it that they can release to let other people play. And apparently, Roblox actually has quite the roster of dinosaur games, the main bulk of them being dinosaur survival simulators and zoo tycoon games. Just from sifting around the Roblox site, some of the ones that I've seen include Prior Extinction, Dinosaur World Mobile, Jurassic Park Tycoon, Prehistoria, Dinosaur Park Tycoon, and many, many more. Primeval Primeval is a British TV show that initially aired back in 2007 and features a zoologist and his team who are on the mission to figure out why strange portals, or anomalies as they refer to them in the show, keep popping up randomly. These anomalies are entrance points that connect their modern world to a different point in time, that being mainly the prehistoric past. As a result, animals like dinosaurs, pterosaurs, giant bugs, Cenozoic mammals, and even futuristic creatures make their way through these anomalies and wreak havoc in one way or another in the modern world. And it's up to our main characters to send the animals back without interrupting the laws of time and space, while also keeping collateral damage to a minimum. 
The show lasted about five seasons before eventually being fully cancelled. Shortly after its cancellation, it was followed by a Canadian spin-off that went by Primeval New World, and had the same basic plot but was cancelled after only one season. Aside from these two shows, there was also a few books made to coincide with the story of the original series, along with a planned animated spin-off called Primeval Lost in Time that was going to focus on Connor and Abby but was never picked up. Ice Age Ice Age is a 2002 family movie franchise that follows the adventures of our three main characters, Manfred or Manny the Mammoth, Sid the Sloth, and Diego the Smilodon. I swear, people would always say shit like Go Diego Go to me growing up, but not once did people call me Diego the Smilodon. That would have been way cooler. Anyways, in case you couldn't tell, the movie takes place during the prehistoric Ice Age, somewhere in the Pleistocene, I believe. And in this franchise, a wide assortment of prehistoric animals are shown, with the third installment even being focused on dinosaurs. In that one, our characters venture into an underground world where dinosaurs are still alive and live in a jungle ecosystem within the Earth. But along with that, they also deal with other large-scale issues like encountering humans, avoiding a flood in their valley caused by a meltdown, and trying to save their planet from a literal meteor. Walking with Beasts Walking with Beasts is a 2001 six-episode documentary miniseries meant to serve as a sequel to the successful Walking with Dinosaurs series. However, instead of dinosaurs, Walking with Beasts is focused on life after the dinosaurs, more specifically, the time of the prehistoric mammals of the Cenozoic. The show was produced by Tim Haynes through the BBC and the Impossible Pictures Company, and the visual effects were done by Framestore, all of which were previously involved with Walking with Dinosaurs. Haynes wanted to do a sequel where they would instead focus on the lesser-known creatures of the Cenozoic in the same style as their more dinosaur-oriented predecessor. With a total budget of £4.2 million, this ended up making it one of, if not the most expensive documentary. And it would end up becoming another hit, with the first episode amassing around 8.5 million viewers in the UK. Chrome Dinosaur Game the Chrome Dinosaur Game is a very simple browser game that features a pixelated T-Rex in a desert that has to avoid obstacles like cactuses that you're able to jump over, and pterosaurs that you're able to duck under, and you're just supposed to go for as long as you possibly can. The longer you progress, the faster the game gets, and the more difficult it becomes. If you die, you have to start all over. The idea of the game was to feature on the Chrome browser when it wasn't connected to the internet, because nowadays, not being connected basically makes you primitive. And what's more primitive than a dinosaur, right? Skyrim Skyrim is an open-world fantasy role-playing video game developed by Bethesda, where you can explore cities, villages, dungeons, caves, forests, and many other places within the game to battle monsters, complete missions, upgrade your character, and save the world. I've never really been interested in the game at all, though I've heard many good things about it from my friends who are very much into it. As far as the paleo content goes, it does feature a couple of Cenozoic creatures, including mammoths and saber cats, which can be found in the game's tundra regions and a regions called the wilds, respectively. Paleo Art Paleo art refers to any kind of artwork that portrays prehistoric life. Over the decades, many talented artists have depicted their skills and efforts to depict prehistoric life in various different ways, whether it's to portray them as they were in the early 1900s, you know, like the art from Charles R. Knight, Rudolf Zallinger, Zdenek Burian, or modern art from people like Mark Witten, Doug Henderson, Mark Hallett, Eli Kish, Louise Ray, William Stout, and so many more. Some of the art that's depicted is retro, some are accurate, others are fantastical, and some are more sci-fi based. There's a lot of talented people out there who've created so many different kinds of paleo art, several of which I've used in my videos in the past and will continue to use because I just love paleo art. I feel like it's one of those topics that get used a lot, but in itself, it's talked about so little and it definitely deserves more recognition. King Kong 
King Kong is a movie franchise that started all the way back in 1933. The movie is about an expedition to the fictional location of Skull Island, which houses all sorts of prehistoric wildlife like dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and serpents. But it also houses Kong, a large ape who the group managed to knock unconscious and bring back to New York City, where he gets loose, climbs the Empire State Building to fight off some planes, only to get shot down and killed. The movie would be followed with several iterations, including a sequel called Son of Kong that came out in the same year. He would be featured in a crossover with Godzilla in 1962's King Kong vs. Godzilla. He had a 1967 film called King Kong Escapes, where in one part, he fights a large fictional theropod dinosaur called Gorosaurus. He would have a 1976 remake that would be followed by its own sequel. There was a 2005 remake that uses fictional dinosaurs descended from real ones. There was a 2017 remake that introduced him to the current MonsterVerse movies, which would, in turn, lead to his eventual fight with Godzilla in 2021, which is currently getting an upcoming sequel. He also had a few animated direct-to-video movies and a few animated TV shows. Not all of King Kong content featured dinosaurs or prehistoric life, but a lot of it did since they were crucial parts of his origins as it led to several iconic scenes, namely Kong's fight with the T-Rex-like theropod. The Flintstones the Flintstones started out as an animated TV show that was made by Hanna-Barbera Productions and debuted in September of 1960. The show was set in the Stone Age and focused on a family of modernized cave people and their prehistoric antics that involved plenty of extinct cartoon animals including their dog-like dinosaur pet, Dino. The show eventually got a couple of live-action movies, one from the 90s by the same name, and a sequel in 2000 called The Flintstones in Viva Rock Vegas, which is actually supposed to serve as a prequel to the 90s film, but none of the original actors reprised their roles for that movie and it was a box office bomb. As far as the original film goes, I remember enjoying it very much as a kid. Eyewitness Dinosaurs Eyewitness Dinosaurs is an informational dinosaur book that I'm sure is familiar to many of us. From what I'm seeing, there seems to be different variations of this book with one publication dating back to 1989 and one dating as recently as 2021. The Eyewitness books were actually a series of children's informational books made by DK, or Dorling Kindersley, a British publishing company, that focused on several different topics that pertain to history, science, media, and so on. Dinosaur were just one of those topics. The book series would later be adapted into a docuseries by the same name, and in 1994, Eyewitness would have a special on dinosaurs from their book on the topic. In this documentary, we're set in this simulated digital museum containing all sorts of exhibits on the topics from their respective books and episodes. In this particular episode, it's a pretty standard dinosaur documentary in terms of the kind of information that's being given, which is presented by some of what I'm assuming is original stop motion effects in the episode mixed with reused footage of various dinosaur movies and documentaries that preceded it. I'm not gonna lie, as weird as the dinosaurs looked in these books, I have like a certain soft spot for them because of just how realistic they were trying to make them. I don't know, in a way it gives them this certain uncanny look that I can't really describe, but at the same time they're just so nostalgic that it's impossible to hate them. At least for me. Especially if we're talking about the T-Rex, I mean just, just look at it, it's, it's so goddamn beautiful. Prehistoric Planet Prehistoric Planet is a documentary series that has a total of 10 episodes that are spanned within two seasons. It was made by the BBC and released exclusively to Apple TV, where it would receive critical praise and high viewership. Many big names were attached to this, both from the general public and the paleontology community. John Favreau was brought on as an executive producer, Hans Zimmer worked on the score, it was narrated by David Attenborough, some of the scientific consultants were Darren Naish, Mark Winton, Steve Brusati, and many more. The dinosaurs themselves were recreated with CGI, made to look as photorealistic and detailed as possible, and were depicted to be as up-to-date and accurate by today's standards of real-world dinosaurs. Walking with Dinosaurs 
Walking with Dinosaurs is a six-episode documentary miniseries that focuses on life throughout the Mesozoic era, starting in the Triassic period and then progressing its way through the Jurassic period, then the Cretaceous, all the way to the dinosaurs' eventual extinction. As I mentioned earlier, the show was created by Tim Haynes, who, after seeing the impressive visual effects of Jurassic Park, wanted to use the same method for his own dinosaur-related project, only for his, he wanted to give audiences an immersive experience in the time of the dinosaurs by making them as realistic as he could during that point in time. Of course, even for the time, the truth was bent in some places throughout the show, so it's not perfect, and by today's standards of information, it's also dated in many areas. But the show would end up becoming a massive success both critically and financially. As a result, it's remembered to this day as being one of the best dinosaur documentaries ever made. Cryptids Cryptids are oftentimes animalistic creatures, sometimes of legends and folklore, whose existence is up in the air, but their existence is also based on sightings that were made of them here and there. You know, you have your Bigfoots, Jersey Devils, Chupacabras, Mothmans, and everything else in between. But there are several cryptids whose descriptions match similarly to that of prehistoric animals. For example, the Loch Ness Monster is often associated with being a type of plesiosaur, as alleged images and sightings of it shows the head of a long-necked marine animal breaking through the surface of the waters of Scotland. There's the Mekelem Bembe cryptid that's mainly depicted as a sauropod-like animal living in the depths of the Congo in South Africa. There's the Ropin, or Ropin, or however you pronounce it, a large pterosaur-like cryptid similar to that of a Dimorphodon, or Rampharynchus, that's said to be flying somewhere in Papua New Guinea and is described to have bat-like wings at the span of about 20 to 30 feet. There's the Kazai Rex, a large reptilian creature that's been allegedly sighted somewhere in the Congo and is believed to be some kind of living dinosaur, one akin to a tyrannosaur. There's plenty of more examples I could list off, but that could easily be a video on its own. As far as to why it's on a paleo media list, I assume it's because of the various movies, documentaries, and books that have been made on the topic, as it's definitely captured public interest in many different ways. Whether people believe it and wish to seek out the truth, or see it as a potential sci-fi flick. Maybe some of these examples will pop up later in the iceberg. We'll see. The Good Dinosaur the Good Dinosaur is a Pixar animated family film from 2015 that takes place in an alternative timeline where the meteor that was supposed to wipe out the dinosaurs missed Earth completely and as a result, dinosaurs were able to thrive for millions of years after. 65 million years later, in the present day, we follow our main character, Arlo, who gets separated from his family, and in his attempt to get back home, he befriends a wild caveman child that he names Spot. So we follow our two characters as they meet new friends and foes in this weird alternative dinosaur populated world. The movie was a financial flop, and people seem to be very mixed about it these days. But I remember people just really not liking this movie back when it first came out. I didn't think too much of it either when I finally got around to watching it, but if I can say anything good about this movie, the landscapes in it actually look really beautiful and are well animated. Camp Cretaceous I'm not going to spend too much time on this entry either. This is an animated Jurassic World TV show that was released back in 2020, and it serves to tell the story of what happened across the island during the events of the 2015 Jurassic World movie when the Indominus Rex broke out of its enclosure and caused a bunch of chaos around the park. We follow our main characters, six kids who attended the park's camp attraction known as Camp Cretaceous, but when things go wrong and they're separated from the adults, the kids have to try and survive on their own on an island that's now overran by dinosaurs. The show lasted for five seasons and actually has a sequel series coming out at some point next year called Jurassic World Chaos Theory. Genny Tartakovsky's Primal Primal is an adult animated TV show that aired on Adult Swim in 2019. It was made by animator and cartoon creator Genny Tartakovsky, who had this story idea of a cave boy and his dinosaur companion for years, but the story just didn't click with him at the time, so he shelved it until years later when he got a chance to revisit it. Only this time, he had developed a different mindset when it came down to creating its story. 
Instead of making another kid's show as he was best known for doing, he ended up turning Primal into a gritty and bloody show about a caveman named Spear, who lives in a world dominated by all kinds of primordial creatures like dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and prehistoric mammals. One of these creatures is a tyrannosaur named Fang, who Spear befriends after a common enemy of theirs kills both of their families, leading to the two teaming up to take down that threat. Following this event, the two continue to band together to survive survive in this brutal world of ape tribes, witches, giant spiders, and so many other creatures. And in the process, they form a close friendship with each other. Alice in Wonderland Alice in Wonderland is a story about a girl who falls through a rabbit hole and lands in a fantasy world of talking animals and strange happenings. The story was initially a book by Charles Dodgson that was published all the way back in 1865, but has been told and retold through many different iterations over the last 150-something years. The reason why it's on this list is because the original story featured a talking dodo bird. After Alice ends up shrinking herself to a point where she's swimming in a puddle of her own tears, she finds a bunch of other animals that have also been swept away by the pool of tears as well, one of them being a dodo bird character. After all of the animals make it ashore from the tears, the dodo suggests they all dry off by doing a caucus race. I think I'm pronouncing that right, which, if I'm correct, is just when everyone runs around in a circle with no real winning goal involved. I shouldn't have to tell you that Alice in Wonderland is a weird story. Disney's Dinosaur Disney's Dinosaur is a 2000 animated family movie about an iguanodon named Aladar, who was raised by a family of lemurs on an island away from other dinosaurs. After a meteor shower forces Aladar and the surviving lemurs to the mainland, he joins a herd of dinosaurs who are venturing through the desert to head towards their nesting grounds, but along with the climate, they also have to avoid other threats like Carnotaurus, the film's main theropod antagonist. The dinosaurs were recreated using CGI, which which still look pretty good today. But to really give the movie its photorealistic look, the creators used actual real-world landscapes as backgrounds throughout the movie. This, coupled with the movie's amazing score, is one of the reasons why it's still well-remembered to this day. 65 65 is a 2023 science fiction movie about aliens who crash land on a prehistoric Earth where they encounter all sorts of carnivorous dinosaurs. It's a very interesting concept, and one that hasn't been explored enough in films. The story keeps things pretty simple though, focusing on a pilot named Mills who was transferring a bunch of passengers through space until they get hit by some asteroids leading to their ship crashing down on Earth with the only survivors being Mills and a little girl named Koa. Together, the two venture through the dinosaur-infested forests to reach the escape pod so that they can leave before they also become a part of the extinction event that wiped out the dinosaurs. Despite the potential for a concept like this, it seems like there were some troubles behind the scenes and a lot of the previous ideas for the movie didn't make it into the final cut, including animals that were completely cut from the film, like this pudgy-looking Lystrosaurus, a crazy-looking Pegomat, Stax, at least I think that's what it is, a three-legged Ankylosaurus young, a raptor with more plumage, and this really cool vulture-style T-Rex along with other T-Rex variants. The Lost World the Lost World is a science fiction book from 1912 that was written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, best known for creating the Sherlock Holmes character in his previous literary works. But in his dinosaur story, he focuses it on a group of characters that are led by a Professor Challenger on an expedition to the top of a plateau in the Amazon rainforest that holds all sorts of prehistoric life on it, including dinosaurs, pterosaurs, Cenozoic animals, and an ape tribe. After his reputation is marred from trying to explain to others about the existence of these animals on this plateau, Challenger sets off with his team to the Amazon in an attempt to prove his accounts to be true. This book is a very influential piece of literature that has left quite the legacy, with even having several film and television adaptations made of it over the years. Jurassic World Evolution 
Jurassic World Evolution is a park building video game that was released in 2018 next to the second installment of the Jurassic World movie trilogy, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The game takes you to the Five Deaths, the fictional island chain mentioned in the movie franchise where you have to build your own Jurassic World in while completing missions, dealing with the island's many respective obstacles, sending out for extracted fossils to find dinosaur DNA from, and so on. As you progress through the game, you can unlock more more islands, dinosaurs, buildings, attractions, and several other features that will help you get to 5 stars, which is the rating system for how well your park is doing. To make sure your park is functional, you have to make sure your guests and dinosaurs are happy, giving them everything they need to make them comfortable, especially the dinosaurs, because if they're not, they could break out and cause a bunch of chaos. As successful as the game was, it left a lot to be desired. As it lacked many different features, it was pretty repetitive in its gameplay play style, it had a lot of different constraints that made it difficult to play around, and so on. Luckily, a lot of these problems seem to be remedied with the game's sequel that came out in 2021. The Amazing World of Gumball the Amazing World of Gumball is an animated TV show that aired on Cartoon Network. It's one of those shows that have a wide roster of characters that are just the most random things ever. One of these characters is literally a T-Rex named Tina Rex. Because, you, you know, the, the T in T-Rex is shortened for Tina Rex. Uh, T is, is, is the shortened version of, of Tina Rex, you know? <laughs> Uh, I know, I'm so funny. And I believe she's the school bully in the show, but uh, yeah, that's, that's why it's on the iceberg. Barney the Dinosaur Barney is an anthropomorphic purple dinosaur character that features in the Barney and Friends children's show meant for toddlers. He sings songs, teaches lessons, hangs out with his other dinosaur-themed friends, and so on. Not much to say about this one, it's obvious why he's on the list, you know, he's a, he's a dinosaur. So I'll just leave it at that. The Land Before Time The Land Before Time is a 14-movie franchise that features a group of dinosaur friends including Littlefoot the Brontosaur, Sarah the Triceratops, Petrie the Pterosaur, Ducky the Sauralophus, and Spike the Stegosaur in their many misadventures in the Great Valley. The first movie was made in 1988 by Don Bluth Studios and featured Littlefoot losing his mother after a brutal fight with the movie's main antagonist, the Sharptooth a deadly non-verbal Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now without his mother, Littlefoot has to rely on himself and his group of friends to make their way back to the Great Valley to reunite with the rest of their families while still trying to avoid Sharptooth. With its success, it would not only spawn several sequels, but also a couple of seasons of a TV show and a bunch of video games. The show doesn't look like it was anything too grand, but nothing egregious either. It seemed like a very safe kid show. It lasted 26 episodes that spanned within two seasons, and the video games that were made for the franchise included The Land Before Time Great Valley Racing Adventure, The Land Before Time Into the Mysterious Beyond, The Land Before Time Prehistoric Adventure, and many more. Pokemon Pokemon is a trading card game with tons of playable monsters that are just referred as Pokemons that you have to collect in packs and use to fight against other players' monsters. The game became a massive success and in turn became a popular franchise with video games, shows, movies, etc. There are apparently thousands of different Pokemon creatures, so it's no surprise that there are some that are based on dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals. Some of these include Garchomp, who's based on a theropod dinosaur, possibly a dromaeosaurid of some kind. Meganeum is based on a sauropod-like dinosaur. Raikou is based on a smilodon-like creature. Tyranitar resembles an old-school theropod look. There's even one called Relicanth that's based on the coelacanth fish. There was even a whole category of fossil Pokemons that featured a bunch of them based on all sorts of prehistoric creatures, including a Tyrannosaur-like one, a Pachycephalosaur-like one, a Pterosaur-like one, and so on. Dungeons and Dragons 
Dungeons & Dragons is a tabletop role-playing game that allows players to venture into an imaginary fantasy world where they have to interact with other players and NPCs, make decisions on their encounter, and listen to the game's referee, or the Dungeon Master as they're called, in order to progress the story. The game also has a lot of guidebooks to help people out, which are called monster manuals that pretty much fill you in on the world of Dungeons & Dragons, and according to some of the manuals, the game actually has its fair share of prehistoric life within it, some of which are based on real-world dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus rex, Brachiosaurus, Triceratops, Stegosaurus, Deinonychus, Ankylosaurus, and so many more. And others being fictional dinosaurs like the horned and omnivorous Bloodstriker, the raptor-like Fleshraker, and the poison-spitting Swindle Spitter. Along with that, they also have a few non-dinosaurian but still prehistoric historic creatures, including pterosaurs and plesiosaurs. As far as the lore for these dinosaurs go, and correct me if I'm wrong, but apparently it's theorized the dinosaurs that are featured in the game are the last ones of their kind after a global-wide extinction event, possibly an ice age of sorts, wiped out the majority of them. I'm sure there's plenty more examples of dinosaurs out there, and I'm sure their lore goes more in depth, considering just how expansive this game is, but again, it's a lot to explain explain in a video like this. Super Mario Odyssey After Peaches is kidnapped for the millionth time by Bowser in this 2017 3D platformer game by Nintendo, Mario has to travel across several different kingdoms with his now-living hat, Cappy, in order to save her before Bowser forces her hand in marriage. In this game, Mario is able to take control and use the abilities of different characters and objects by throwing Cappy at them. In one of the kingdoms that Mario visits, which is called Cascade Kingdom, there are a couple of different dinosaur-themed areas called Fossil Falls and Dinosaur Nest. It's in this kingdom you can find a Tyrannosaurus Rex as well as another kingdom called the Wooded Kingdom, where you can take control of them by throwing the hat at them. Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! first started out as a manga that grew popular enough to gain its own TV show and trading card game. The story is about a young boy who's able to solve an ancient puzzle that awakens the spirit of a pharaoh from Egypt who's lost his memories. And now the boy has to help this entity regain his memories through a bunch of stuff that I have no real interest in covering. I want to be honest, I didn't watch really any of these shows, so I have no real attachment to them, and in turn, I have no real interest in covering them. The only reason why I'm covering them is because they're on the iceberg, so don't expect me to be too in-depth with stuff like this because, to put it simply, I don't care. The only thing I care about are the dinosaur aspects of them. And in the context of this entry, you have the card game, where you have to duel against other players using monsters from your deck some of which are actually dinosaurs. A lot of them are fantastical and exaggerated versions of their real-life counterparts, but some of them are definitely more fictional than others. I mean, just look at some of these. Giant Rex, Ultimate Conductor Tyranno, Scrap Raptor, and so on. The dinosaurs fall under different elemental groups like Earth, wind, fire, water, light, and so on. And it seems like there are certain characters that are typically known for using dinosaurs during these card battles during the show. Super Sentai Power Rangers in the 70s, Toei and Bandai would band together to create a new TV show about a superhero team called the Super Sentai series that would later be adapted under the Power Rangers title. Both shows used dinosaurs pretty heavily as their theme, not just for the outfits the heroes would wear, but also the mech suits that they would power for battles as well. In fact, the first Super Sentai series that would be adapted under the American Power Rangers name was called, well this, but it translates to Dinosaur Squadron Beast Ranger. But other Power Rangers content that contains these more dinosaur-heavy themes were Power Rangers Dino Thunder, Power Rangers Dino Charge, Power Rangers Dino Fury, and even the 2017 movie featured some robot dinosaur action. Going back to the Sentai series, there were some other dinosaur-titled ones as well, like Blastosaur Squadron Rampage Ranger, and the extremely long-titled Zyuden Sentai Kyoryuger vs. Go Busters The Great Dinosaur Battle Farewell Our Eternal Friends. 
Now, I'm not gonna lie, I'm very behind on my Power Rangers lore. I didn't watch the show a lot as a kid, so I'm not entirely sure about all of the dinosaur content within it. I could be missing stuff here and there, and if I am, do let me know in the comments down below. The Ballad of Big Al After the success of Walking with Dinosaurs, there were several sequels and spin-offs made to the Walking with franchise. As far as the spin-offs went, there was Chased by Dinosaurs, Sea Monsters, and of course, probably the most well-known one, The Ballad of Big Al. This 30-minute, one-off Walking with Dinosaur special focused on the real-life discovery of an Allosaurus skeleton that was given the nickname of Big Al. The specimen was an important find for paleontology, as not only were the bones well-preserved, but 95% of the skeleton had been found. What was also interesting about this skeleton was that it showed that Big Al was actually a sub-adult and wasn't fully grown. On top of that, several of its bones were shown to be broken and infected due to how well its skeleton was preserved, leading many to be convinced that this was likely what caused Big Al's demise. So given the fine significance to paleontology, a special was made for it in 2000 to document what Big Al's life might have been like before his death and what might have happened leading up to it. The special shows Big Al's early life, his teenage years, and eventually his adolescence, where failed attempts at obtaining a mate and failed attempts at hunting would cause him the very injuries that would lead to his infections and in turn lead to his death. Tomb Raider Tomb Raider is an action-based video game series that started back in the 90s and features Lara Croft, an adventurer who travels the world in search of lost cities and ancient artifacts, and has so many different iterations and video games, I'm definitely not gonna get into it in any in-depth way. But what I will talk about is the fact that in many of these games, dinosaurs actually make several appearances. They mainly include the Tyrannosaurus Rex and the Velociraptor, and based on what I've seen, they're not exactly huge parts of the game, but mainly as enemies for specific levels or areas of the game that don't get revisited after you manage to pass them. Depending on which Tomb Raider you're playing, you'd either find them in a Lost Valley kind of map or maybe inside a dark cave. I'm not entirely sure how many Tomb Raider games there are, but the first three, Tomb Raider, Tomb Raider 2, and Tomb Raider 3 Adventures of Laura Croft, all featured raptors and a T-Rex, along with Tomb Raider Anniversary. Even the mobile games, Lara Croft Relic Run and Tomb Raider Reloaded, featured dinosaurs in them as well. Ponyo Ponyo is a 2008 Studio Ghibli produced animated Japanese film about a magic goldfish that is brought to land from the ocean where she is saved by a young boy. After they become friends, she attempts to become a human just like him, but this causes an imbalance in nature that has to be restored. The reason it's on this list is because in one part of the movie, she uses her magical abilities for her and the boy to be able to swim with prehistoric Devonian fish. Some of the extinct creatures that were shown and specifically named were Bothriolepis, Devoninchus, Dipnorhynchus, and even some Trilobites. Fortnite. I never thought I'd be talking about fucking Fortnite like this on my channel, but I'm full of surprises today, aren't I? So if you're someone who is just completely living under a rock, then you probably don't know about this Battle Royale game. It's not too well known. This indie game is called Fortnite. Yeah, you know, the one that has Peter Griffin in it. Yeah, Fortnite added dinosaurs at one point, more specifically, raptors that you can find around the map by finding a nest with an egg in it. Hatching that egg will get you a raptor raptor that you can either harvest for material, or tame so that it could follow you around and maybe ride it into battle. They can even attack other players if they pose a threat to you. Not gonna lie, it does sound like a fun addition to the game. Edge of Spider-Verse Edge of Spider-Verse is a comic book that focuses on Spider-Mans in different dimensions and the enemies they have to battle in their respective dimensions. One of them is literally a prehistoric dimension where everyone is a dinosaur with human levels of intelligence and where Spider-Man is actually Spider-Rex because he's a literal fucking Tyrannosaurus Rex who's able to swing on webs around the primordial jungles in the time of the dinosaurs. Apparently, according to how the story is described, there 
was a pterodactyl named Tur Tarker, who was getting chased by the evil Tyrannosaur leader that ruled over the other dinosaurs, whose name was Noranosaurman. They both end up getting hit with a meteor full of spiders that causes them to switch bodies with each other, and in the process, also giving them superpowers. Tarker is turned into Spider Rex, giving him the ability to web swing, while Noranosaurman is turned into a green and purple pterodactyl that is supposed to be some kind of saurian version of the green goblin. While Turtarker, being the good dinosaur that he is, uses his power with great responsibility and now has to fight against dinosaurian foes, Noranosaurman is set on using his powers to go after Tarker. It's a very interesting and hilarious idea for a Spider-Man story. Short Stories Short stories is literally just referring to dinosaur short stories in general, which there's actually a ton of. Most of them being fantasy and or science fiction based. There are actually hundreds of dinosaur short stories out there, with many of them being bound together in anthology books. These books include Dinosaurs, Dinosaur Fantastic, Return of the Dinosaurs, The Ultimate Dinosaur, Soria Monstra, Apex, and so many more. And that's not even counting all of the ones that featured in those sci-fi fantasy horror magazines from over the decades, or all of the ones that will just randomly appear in different areas of literature that you wouldn't expect them to be in. There's so many stories out there to be covered, some having really cool ideas, others being downright weird, a lot of them being fun and pulpy, and some that are more serious and thought-provoking. Some of my favorite dinosaur short stories are ones that I've actually covered here on the channel before. Like Death of the Moon, a story about a desperate insect alien race looking for the possible sanctuary of prehistoric Earth as their last hope for survival, and Hell Creek, the story about an ankylosaur and triceratops banding together during a prehistoric zombie apocalypse, and the monster of Lake Lemaitre, a story about what happens when you mix the mind of a person with the body of a prehistoric beast. There's so many more stories out there, and unfortunately I don't have the speed to cover them all of the time, so if I can make any suggestions to you guys, it's that you should go read more dinosaur short stories. Calvin and Hobbes to end off the first episode of this series, we have Calvin and Hobbes, my absolute favorite comic strip. It was created by Bill Watterson, who had developed an interest in making cartoons as a kid, and eventually would in college, initially starting out with political cartoons, before moving on to the project that he would become most well known for. In 1985, he would create Calvin and Hobbes, a comic strip that focused on our titular characters, a six-year-old little boy named Calvin and his many imaginary antics and adventures with his stuffed tiger Hobbes, who, in Calvin's mind, is a real anthropomorphic tiger. I loved these comics growing up. I remember my family and I had the complete compendium books that we read so many times it began to fall apart. Unsurprisingly, some of my favorite Calvin and Hobbes moments were when the duo would encounter dinosaurs in their wild imaginary adventures. In a couple of comic strips, they would travel in their time machine box to the prehistoric past to see what dinosaurs actually looked like, only to get chased off back to the present. There are many examples in more one-off strips where Calvin, like any normal six-year-old kid would pretend to be a dinosaur and get into a lot of trouble because of it. And other times, we've had more extreme examples of Calvin's dinosaurs, like riding a Styracosaurus out of school, or a pack of Deinonychus eating one of his classmates, or the infamous and very hilarious strip of a pack of T-Rexes in fighter jets ready to shoot down a herd of Chasmosauruses. No, I'm not joking. This is an actual comic image that Watterson drew out, and it is unironically one of the coolest pieces of paleomedia I've ever seen. I just really love Calvin and Hobbes. And one day I would just love to make a, a bigger, more in-depth video on it. But for now, we'll end it here. Well, that was the first tier of the Paleo Media Iceberg. It was really fun going through all of these different topics. I'm gonna be honest, a lot of them did feel a bit out of place since not all of them were primarily paleo based. But that being said, for those examples, I can't imagine any other time or video where I'd ever mention them again. So I guess if they're going to be covered in some way or another on my channel, what better place to do that than an iceberg video? But seriously, it was fun learning about just how much prehistoric 
historic life is inserted into media, even for a minimal appearance. And this is literally only scratching the surface. I'm looking forward to covering the rest of the tiers in the near future. That's all I have to say for now. Thank you all so much for watching, and please, have a nice day.